Not that much. It would never fit you. How about those boots? Uh, I can lose weight. You're ugly. How'd it go? No problem, boss. Johnny's taking Oh? Yeah, boss. Nice and messy, just like you wanted. We're sure he'll be found on the trail very soon. Good. Uh, I want the work put out on the street and have them say that nobody yet, nobody messes with me. Got it? Sure, boss. Good. Now, don't you two have rounds to attend to? That means you two boys have clutches to make. Now, get to it. involved in some pretty heavy stuff, but what that is exactly, I couldn't tell you. Well, we've got a pretty good idea about what he's into, uh, but any detail that you could provide for us would really help us out with our investigation. I understand you go to church uh, frequently. Yes. I try to get Al to go with me, but he isn't interested. I really worry about him. But I don't think he'd do anything against the church or me. He really does love me. I just hope he comes to love Jesus. Would you happen to know anything about his whereabouts? No, he only calls me occasionally. You think there's any chance that you could talk him into turning himself in? I could try, but there's not much chance. Do you know anything about his businesses? Well, I believe it's with the uh, spices that he's created. What kind of spices? It's uh, a blend of some salt and different spices that are that do, uh, help enhance the flavor of meat. And there's also one that he's created to help enhance the flavor of fish, of fish as well. Okay. Thank you, uh, Ms. Fine. We'll be in touch. Thank you, Agent Green. I hope I've been of some help. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you have a great day. Hey, boss. This is Tony. I just arrived at the spot, and I'm going to go in and uh, talk to Slick. I saw him in the window. I know he's here, and uh, I'm going to take care of my business, your business, and then I'll call you on the way out. I'm pretty confident it's going to happen, yes. All right, well, fun. Later. Hello, Slick. My name's Tony. How you doing? I'm all right. It's how you doing. Uh, that's important, but my boss called me and said you gave him a call and you need some help here. I need some help from the drug kingpins, man. They're taxing me for all money from me. And I got the police thinking I'm doing drugs over here, selling drugs. So I need them off my back. So was that the damage they did on they, the door? Yeah, okay. they messed up my door. So I, don't want to deal with it. You know, I need somebody else to help me out with that. So yeah. you know it's not cheap. Yeah, but I need it. All right. It's all my last resort. Well, my boss Alphonse, you know, he, he, he can take care of all that business. Yeah, I talked to him a little bit. Yeah. Uh, seems like a good guy, but you guys can handle business for me. But but uh, you know it's going to cost, and if you don't end up uh, live up to your end, we'll come and take care of our business with you. All right? Just let you know, this is 
scripted business. Right? Yeah. Does that sound good? Yeah, as long as you guys hold up your end. Oh, we're here. Got my end. Yeah, we got people. Yeah. Now, um, so you have a little something for me today? Yeah, I to kick something. it off. Okay. All right. That's so good. You guys that arrangement? I did. All right. I think they should be good for this week. Yeah, I'm not even going to count it. We'll go back. We're gonna, this is a trust thing right now. Right. So um, I'll be back this time next week. And, and you won't have any problems. You won't have any. Uh, we'll be around. And I'll talk to my people in the police department. Okay. And all right. Right. you can take care of business for you. I mean, I'll take care of you. Right on. Next week when you come in, I need a pound of spice. You do. Bring that forward. Good stuff. Cost. Best in the country. I'll, I heard good things about it. Right. Uh, All right, so when I come back next week, now I'm going to bring my partner just in case, you know. But I'll have it. You have the money just like this. It works out good. I feel like this could be a good, good connection here. All right? Let's see where it goes, man. I okay. trust you. All right, so. All right, so. All right, I'll All right. be back same time next week. All right? And yeah. then. If it works out this week, every week, same time, same. All right? Got it. Okay. All right. See you next week. Hey, boss. This is Tony. Yeah, I just walked outside, took care of business. Slick's on board. He knows what's up. He knows what will happen if he doesn't take care of his business. But it's all good. Good dude. I, I, I'm uh, enjoying working with him right now. But he knows we'll be back if we have to. All right, boss. Yep. Take care. Hey Larson. Hey, what's going on, Brady? What do you got? Got nothing. We uh, came across the body. It was just laying right here. Can't find any uh, bullet bullet wound. Can't find uh, there's no shrapnel. There's nothing. Got any casings or anything in the area? Nothing. No, there's. It's weird though. Forensics came back yesterday. They said they had glycerin on the exit wounds. Yeah. I just that's all they had. That's all we got. I don't even know what to make of that. I mean, did the guy blow up with dynamite or what? Well, the only thing that we do have is he has some ties to um, to Alphonse. So we got to trace this murder back to Alphonse. So it's a lot deeper than just uh, your average. A lot deeper than the guy found in the park, yeah. All right. Well, I'll keep working at this. See if I can dig anything else up. Glycerin. It just doesn't make sense. Well, whatever resources you need, let me know. We'll see what we can find out. All right, well, we'll do. Thanks, Brady. All right. Yes, who's this? How you doing, Agent Brady here? Oh, Agent Brady, hey, how's the wife? Uh, just fine, just fine. Uh, listen, uh, I need uh, your input on a particular case that I'm investigating. You got a minute? Oh, yeah. What you need? Okay, I've got what looks like a shooting victim, uh, but the body has no apparent entry wounds. 
and uh, the face and abdomen looked like something inside the body exploded outward. Um, also, there was no bullet casings or lead shrapnel found, but there were traces of glycerin found in the body. What could cause something like that? Uh, glycerin, uh, yeah. Um, that's kind of interesting. That kind of sounds like a round that we developed a few years ago. It was initially designed to help our, our combat troops, but the problem was is um, it could only be configured for a semi-auto pistol and um, it had an effective range of about 10 feet and that was it. And what it is is a solid glycerin round. Uh, it has liquid nitrogen, liquid oxygen, and liquid hydrogen in it. And that it's designed that when it enters the body, uh, it'll explode outwards in the in a reverse direction. Added to, it doesn't have any brass at all because it's a solid round. When the firing pin hits it, it ignites in a separate chamber that propels it forward. The problem is, is we never developed a round uh, after that. Uh, it never went into into manufacturing, and. Um, it's highly classified, you know, if if anybody knew how to make it, you know, they would have had to get their hands on the blueprints or the specifications from the government. And how that would happen, I have no idea. So is it possible that a, a regular citizen might be able to get his hands on this information? A regular, a regular citizen? No, no. Uh, there have to be someone with connections on the inside. Okay. Um, is it possible that you could meet with me this coming week at headquarters? Uh, yeah, give me a time and a date. How about Tuesday morning at 10? Sounds good. I'll be there. Okay, yeah. I, I've got a proposition I'd like to discuss with you. Okay, well, I'm open, I'm open to whatever you got, so... Okay, great. I appreciate it. We'll see you Tuesday morning at 10. All righty. Thanks a lot. Uh, and, uh, Agent, stay safe. Yes. Stay safe. You know. I will, I will, and you also. All righty. Bye now. Thanks. Bye bye. Early this morning, the body of John Jackson was found by a young girl along a path in the local preserve. Jackson, who had a history of felony convictions, was reported to have been allegedly connected to Alphonse and his criminal organization. When asked about the discovery, the young girl had this to say. Me and my sisters were walking in the park and we saw a deer. We walked a little bit further and saw a dead body. It was really disgusting and scary. It was really disgusting. For the National News Network, this is Bob Turlock. It's really so good to see you, sir. Thank you, sir. I love you so much. I'm so glad you could come out and meet with me. Well, I was willing to help. How's the wife? Great, great. Thanks for asking. So, what exactly did I do for you? Well, I have been trying for quite a while, uh, without much success, I might add, to put a case together against a major drug dealer known as Al Fonz. And I believe that you can be of help with that. Well, anything I can do. Do we have a location where Alphonse is? No, I'm afraid we don't. He's gone underground and has been for a couple of years now. Well, oh, that does make it difficult, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Well, you know, I'll do what I can. Um, you know, with my reputation, I can hide in plain sight. Okay, uh, I hope that's exactly what you need. Here's what I need. Okay. I need to track his movements. I need to know who he's working with and exactly what he's up to. Now that means surveillance, but it's surveillance that can be done right out in the open. You think you can handle that? Yeah, I can do that. What I need to do is, I think the best way to start is see if I can track down his henchmen and follow them, and then see if we can make a connection to them to Alphonse. Does that make sense? Good idea. That's a perfect place to start. Well, I'll do my best. All right, I appreciate it. I think with your help, we might have a fighting chance of bringing this scumbag to justice. Oh, I hope so, because you know what? There are too many drugs on the street as is. Very true. We don't want organized crime in our district. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Thank you, sir.
Agent Braden, can I help you? Uh, yeah, this is uh, Ron Nelson. Um, well, hey, Commander, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Um, I got a lead uh, on regards to Alphonse and his henchmen. Evidently, um, the owner of Joe's Cafe has been uh, being troubled by his henchmen, as it were, being extorted. Oh, really? So I'm going to head on down there and see what I can find out from him, and um, I'll give you a call back as soon as I know what's going on. Okay, good work, Commander. Uh, keep me posted. Will do. God bless. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <sighs>
I'm dealing with some issues with my wife, and I can't afford to pay you guys. You know what? What? That comes under the OL category. Thank you. Sure. Two hundred. Did you know that when you pushed that across the table? Nope. Should I counter? We don't just did. He's my man. So it's new bills. Ten. Still short two hundred. How's that? What do you think? thousand dollars there, that's what I thought I owed you, and I don't have two hundred dollars on me. Well, you're trying to give us a song and dance by your wife. The boss man doesn't want to hear any of that. If we come back short and try and tell him that he you gave us a story, he's going to want something extra. We're trying to play it. Well, Everybody has issues. Your issues aren't our issues. That's uh, true enough. So what are we going to do about this? We're going to wait. For what? For me to collect two hundred more dollars. In the next two minutes? In the next two days. Two oh, days. We don't. What's the deal? You've been good most of the time. What's going on now? I'm dealing with my wife and cancer. Hmm. Well, we're going to have to be dealing with the boss man if we don't get come back with twelve hundred bucks. And we're not playing that game. Because I have issues too. Can't squeeze blood out of the turnip. We don't can. <clears throat> you know what the consequences are. What are they? Handle it. Handle. some bad news. What do you want first? Well, I'll take the bad news first. All right, well, the bad news is I arrived too late. Joe, really? the owner of the cafe, is dead. There was a massive exit wound out of his face Look, and no apparent entrance wound. It kind of looks like the same type of round we discussed before, you know, that glycerin round, the off-the-wall thing. Right, right. Well, I'm sorry to hear about your lead, but that definitely uh, still ties in with Alphonse and his gang. Yeah, it does. The problem is, is trying to find Alphonse himself. However, I got the good news. Okay. I got a positive ID on the henchman. It's okay. Tony Alvarez and his brother Guido working hand in hand. And I also got their license plate number, was able to track it down definitely to them. It belongs to them. They are the two main henchmen we got to worry about and we got to follow. Okay, that's great news, Commander. That'll definitely help us push this case forward. I'll do what I can. I'll be in touch. Right. Thank you, sir. And thank you, sir. God bless and uh, stay safe out there. You too. Uh, bye now. Bye-bye. Oh boy, if it ain't one thing, it's another. You got some money? 
Yeah, here. It's all there? All there. That's, this better be right. It's, it's good. It's good, man. All right. Take care. Come back. Call us again. I will. Sure. Agent, as always, 
to be able to help you and the FBI is an honor. Well, I appreciate your help. Okay. I'll be back to you as soon as I can. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mike, I cannot begin to tell you how frustrating this case has been. You know, um, I've been following these two thugs around everywhere. They're obviously selling drugs, right? But they're doing it in grocery bags, so we can't really prove that there are drugs in them. But the guys are paying for these quote-unquote groceries in hundred-dollar bills. Now, I think I have enough to bring them to court. But my boss, you know, the guy that contracted me to do this, Agent Brady, he says, no, we're going to hold off until we actually have a connection with this one guy, Al Fonz. He seems to be the big lady. But we can't make the connection. I, you know, I don't know what to do. Yeah. What do you need from me? Just input. Uh, have any ideas? What can I do to, to connect these two guys with their boss? Because I follow them, but I never catch them directly in contact with Al Fonz. I, I don't know what to do. And it's frustrating. You should try to buy some. idea. But then again, even if I buy some, I can put them in, you know, on trial, you know, bring charges against them, but I can do that anyway. The problem is we need to connect them with Al Bonds. Get it on film. Get him on film. Have you followed him? We can't find him. That's the problem. We know his sister, right? And Brady talked to his sister about it, but she doesn't even know where he is at. He won't tell her. We know that he's operating out of somewhere, but no records show anything with his name on it. We can't pinpoint him. We can't locate him. He's, he's like a ghost, a phantom. He just doesn't exist. You know, I'm, I'm getting nowhere fast. What would bring him to you? Probably me being exposed that I am following them. I don't know. I don't know. That's a tough... You're in a tough spot. Yeah. Well, mind you, you're a good friend. You're always there for me. I just don't know what to do. Well, I'm sorry, Ronnie. If you think of anything, you let me know. You know I'm here for you. But... In which one, boss? Nelson won't be a problem anymore. Yeah, we rigged his car so when it starts, it'll go kabloom. What? You mean kaboom. Huh? The word is, oh, never mind, we got work to do. Yeah, right. We'll see you later, boss. Let's go, Guido. Idiots. Why don't we put over there? Cemetery this coming Friday with full military honors. He will be missed. 
The explosion which took his life is still under investigation. We will be right back after these words. Good morning. As we gather here this morning in the presence of Almighty God to mark the passing of Commander Ron Nelson, we welcome his family and his dear friends to reflect on Ron's life and our relationship with him. We are here to share our love and support to his family as well as his close friends. Let us now acknowledge that Commander Ron Nelson is no longer in our care and now is in keeping of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For as much as it has pleased our almighty God, we commit our departed brother, body, to be consumed by the earth, ashes to ashes and dust to dust, in the hope and the promise of the resurrection that is through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord God, in this time of grief, we ask that you come in your compassion to lift up Ron's family, remembering that you are a God who weeps over the loss of a loved one. Yet we all ask for your joy as we celebrate Ron's returning to you. For the scriptures say, we do not mourn like those we have no hope for. We ask that you be present and be glorified as we remember Ron Nelson's life. Amen. Much as six. Hey, Guido, that's why I do the counting. 
Okay, what was so important about the news? Hey boss, sorry to tell you, your sister's dead. If that's supposed to be a joke, it's not funny. Sorry boss, if there's anything we can do. Just get out, leave me alone. My beloved Maria, how much I have loved you. You are so kind and generous to all people. If I near knew you were sick, I know what you, and I know you are. How grateful you are to all people and myself. May God bless you. Amen. My dearest brother Al, as you are reading this, you know that I have passed from this world. I have been battling stage 4 cancer for some time, but I did not want to burden you with that information. Now that I am gone, I want to share some concerns about you. You have led a precarious life without God, and I would rather that you accept Jesus in your life so that we may be reunited together in heaven. I know that you have at this time no peace and are filled with guilt, but that can all change once you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. I love you and praying for you. May God bless you and may you find the forgiveness and peace that you are seeking. Now I know what I need to do. Jesus, I want you to forgive me. I've done some horrible things to all the people I once knew. I've done some things like extortioning, drug trafficking, you name it. Even I ignored my sister, Lord. It's terrible things that happen, Lord. I feel responsible for this, Lord. Jesus, I want you to be my personal Savior and Lord. myself in. Really? 
I will to cooperate fully into your investigation in my doings. Like I said, I'm through. Why the sudden change of heart? You probably won't believe this, but I found Jesus. Then come on in. I'll be waiting. Just one more thing. I don't expect any special treatment. I've done some horrible things, and I expect to pay for what I've done. But all this will make the news. I want them to also know that Jesus is the reason I turned myself in. I want them to also know that Jesus can't forgive anything to give and to give eternal life. I know that now. I don't expect any forgiveness from those that have harmed. I'll see you soon, Detective Brady. And may God bless you. Amazing. A major breakthrough into the investigation of mob boss Alphonse came when Fonz turned himself in. With us from our San Francisco affiliate is FBI agent Richard Brady. Thank you for being here, Agent Brady. Glad to be here, Bob. So what exactly happened here? What made him turn himself in? Well, that's the interesting part, Bob. Uh, when he turned himself in, he provided documentation on every crime he committed, past to present, with full details on how exactly each crime was done. He also provided information on all his uh, drug suppliers and drug dealers, and names and locations for all his associates. And how long have you been working on this case? Well, we've been working on this case for several months with no results. Um, Fonz was very crafty and detailed uh, about his operations as the paperwork proved out. Even if we had enough probable cause to arrest him, the case probably still would have never made it to trial. So, what made him turn himself in? Well, that's another interesting part of this story, Bob. Uh, according to Fonz, he had an epiphany after his sister Maria died. Seems she had been pressuring him to turn to Christ and to turn his life around. And it seems like the shock of her death made him do just that. And there's one more point. And that is? When he turned himself in, his was not the demeanor of a criminal. His was the demeanor of a man at peace. And he actually stated that he was ready to face any and all consequences for his crimes. I believe he really accepted Christ as his personal savior. That is an interesting story, Agent Brady. Thank you for your update. Well, we are out of time for this hour of news. Until tomorrow, this is Bob Turlock of the National News Network.